Hey, it's Paul. Today I'm going to look at creating our first native script plugin for Android. We'll take a look at the iOS one in a future video, but for now we'll just get a simple up and running demo for an Android project. Sometimes I find myself taken for granted just how many plugins there are inside of the community. If you want to do anything in your application, you can just pull in a third party plugin. Oftentimes you might find that it just feels so complex to make these plugins yourself and with native scripts, it's actually really, really easy. In this video, we're going to be interfacing with Android to get the version number of an application. Not exactly the most complex plugin in the world, but it should be a gentle introduction to plugin development with native script. One of the things that can help us when developing native script plugins is to use a seed. A seed is just a starter project that contains everything we need to get started on focusing on writing the plugin itself rather than setting up the files, folders, and dependencies. Nathan Walker has created a native script plugin seed that we'll be using within this project. So we can now clone the plugin seed. I'm going to clone this into a folder named app version. And when we've done that, we can change our directory into app version. And from within here, we need to run the post clone script. We can do that by running npm run post clone, and this essentially runs an npm install and then starts our plugin seed configuration. I'm going to add my GitHub username, and then we need to set a name for our plugin. I'm going to say app dash version. And I do want to initialize a fresh local Git project. So I'm going to answer yes to this and we can now run npm run setup. This now takes our plugin and installs it into a newly created demo project. This means we can test our plugin super easy by simply running the demo. Let's open up the project inside of Visual Studio Code and get an idea of how it looks. Inside of our app version folder, we now have things like a demo folder and the demo folder simply contains our native script application. We have our node modules, which is our dependencies. But the most important files within here are the app version.ios.ts, the app version.common.ts, and the app version.android.ts. Files like the app version.ios and .android are platform specific plugins, and the app version.common is for functionality between them both. For example, right now, no matter whether we're on an Android or an iOS device, we do get an initial dialog box. The box appears and says your plugin is working on and depending on whether you're running Android or iOS, we'll obviously tail out that message. For now, let's take a look at how we could get the app version within Android. So our journey starts at the Android documentation. We've done a little digging and we find out that we need this package manager in order to get information about the package on the device. So it says you can find this class through get package manager. And that's how we do it on the Android device from within the Android SDK. We can interface with the Android SDK by importing from application and from within application, we can import Android. And if we take a look at the description, we see that it encapsulates the methods and properties specific to the Android platform. As a result, we can access things like that get package manager. So let's add a constructor and we'll call super because this extends common. So because it extends common, we'll have that dialog box. The next thing we'll do is grab an instance of that package manager. So let's say const package manager is equal to android.context.get package manager. And now that we have this package manager class, we can do things like get the package info. This is the overall information about the contents of a package. And as you can see, this corresponds to all the information collected from the Android manifest.xml. So inside of our demo application under app, app resources, Android, we have the Android manifest.xml. So we want to get this version name, which is 1.0. We could change this and we get a different version name when we actually retrieve it using our plugin. But for now, what we want to be looking for is that 1.0. From within the package manager, we can now access the get package info method. We need to pass in a package name and any flags that we want to pass along with that. If we say const package info, 
is equal to our package manager, as this is the instance of our package manager, dot get package info. And in order to get the information about this particular package, we have to get the context for this current package by saying android.context.get package name. And we're not interested in any other flags, so we'll say flags of zero. So now we have access to the package info. Let's take a look at that inside of the docs. We have the package info, and if we scroll down, we see something called version name. This is the version name of this package. And we could also get any of the other features, such as the package name, version code, and so on. But for now, we're going to look at the version name. As remember, that's what's reflected in this version name here. So we can say const version name is equal to our package info dot version name. And the final thing that we might want to do is instead put the message equal to that version name. As we're extending common, we have access to this message string, which appears on screen. So let's set our this dot message equal to the version number for this package is, and we'll pass in that version name. If we've done everything correctly, we should now be able to run our project and see the results of this on screen. So that there's no magic, I'm going to show you how this works. Inside of our script within package.json, we have this demo.android and demo.ios. I'm going to run this on Android because we've made an Android plugin at this point. And I'm also going to run this on the real device rather than an emulator. So I'm going to remove this emulator flag, but you can keep it there if you want to run this on an emulator. And I'm going to save the package.json. If we then run npm run demo.android, they should install it on the Android device, and we should be able to see the results of our plugin inside of the application. The first thing that we get is the fact that our plugin is working on Android. This is because of the common dialog, and the next thing that we get is the version number for this package is 1.0. Let's make some changes to the Android manifest to instead put the version name to be 1.1 .1 and save our file. This will rebuild the project on the device. And after running it once again, we do indeed get the version number for this package is 1.1. .1. So in this video, we had a look at creating our first native script plugin for Android. We looked at the Android documentation to get an idea of how we can implement the functionality that we want to implement. We then implemented that inside of our app version for Android. We deployed it onto the device. And of course, we tested it on the device to see whether the functionality actually worked. So now you've got an idea of how you can access the native device APIs within your native script app. I hope you create some interesting plugins and I'd love to see what you make inside of the comments section below. Until next time, my name is Paul Halliday and I'll see you very soon in the next video.